massive carnivorous plant waits patiently with its specially evolved glue trap leaves for prey to come its way. But it doesn't just digest the ants and other insects that are unlucky enough to tread on its leaves. This carnivore is also a secret omnivore. This is the butterwort. Hi, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Flora Logic. Butterwort gets its name from the greasy look and feel of the leaves to us humans. But to ants and other small insects, the leaves are definitely more flypaper than buttered popcorn. Butterwort is the common name for the carnivorous plants in the genus Pinguicula, which is one of three genera in the Lentibulariaceae family. We already covered one of the others, Utricularia, otherwise known as bladderwort. They're aquatic, super sucker, flesh-eating cousins. Like most carnivorous plants, Butterwort lives in nutrient-poor environments and rely on catching live prey to supply themselves with everything they need to thrive. There are around 80 species of butterwort, and they live throughout wetlands in the Northern Hemisphere and Central and South America, all the way up to the Arctic Circle. As far as carnivorous monsters go, these flesh eaters are pretty teeny tiny, with the largest species, Pinguicula gigantea, only reaching widths of about 12 inches. Gigantea indeed. Most butterwort species have a flat rosette of broad, oval-shaped leaves around the base, with a few species sporting upright leaves. Some can gently bend their leaves in response to capturing a snack, while others remain completely still. Help me! The Venus flytrap, with its mechanical enclosure, definitely has to grind harder for its meals. Each leaf of the butterwort is covered in two kinds of specialized glands. The stalked glands produce super sticky, gluey mucilage to snare the prey. While the sessile glands, the ones that are directly on the surface of the leaf, pump out digestive enzymes to break down the prey once it's stuck to this superfine glue trap. Larger insects can easily escape the tiny mucilage glands, so the main prey of the butterwort is smaller insects like gnats, aphids, and ants. And the more their prey moves, the more mucilage the plant produces. It's like the quicksand of the plant world. Every movement brings you closer to death. Even though the butterwort is lights out for ants and other small arthropods, they rely on larger insects like bees and flies to pollinate their beautiful flowers. These gorgeous blooms come in violet, red, pink, blue, and white, making butterwort a stunning addition to any carnivorous plant collection. Active trappers like sundew and Venus flytrap, which we've also done episodes on, rely on both mechanical and chemical signals to get to the digesting. Passive carnivorous plants like butterworts rely solely on chemical stimuli to start breaking down their prey. The chemicals that are found in the exoskeletons of any trapped arthropods let the butterwort know it's go time. One study suggests it's not just arthropods that provide butterworts with their nosh. These plants are actually mixotrophs, getting energy and carbon from a cocktail of sources. Butterworts were found to contain the digestive enzyme alpha amylase, also found in humans and other mammals, which breaks down starches found in plant material. The alpha amylase they secrete suggests they also break down and digest the plant matter that lands on their flat leaves, making butterworts the omnivores of the carnivorous plant world. Butterworts are steak and potato kind of plants. Known as pings to plant nerds around the world, these species are a favorite of carnivorous plant lovers. And happily, they're relatively easy to keep and propagate. If you're adding butterwort to your collection, be sure to read about care for your specific species. They have different needs depending on if they're warm temperate, cool temperate, or tropical. And don't forget to show them off to your friends as your only omnivorous plant. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. These plants are actually mixotrophs. Okay. You want it. You got it. Carnivorous plants. They got it. Okay, ready.